Monetarism, Bleeding Humanity to Death Money is the blood of an economic body. If there is too much money, the high blood pressure of rising inflation will destroy the economic body. If there is too little money, the low blood pressure of deflation causes an anemic, lethargic economy. If an economy is growing, donations in the vein of interest payments on money can be sustained. If an economy is dying, blood loss becomes a vicious cycle, speeding up the death of the economic body, economic suicide. If a stressed economic body is being vivisected by austerity measures to eliminate economic parts by financial phlebotomist bankers, a mortation should be called. If economic blood only circulates a round trip between banks and debtors, that is, debtors borrow bank money to pay old bank debts, all mortations should be called. A trite but true cliché. Austerity? Let us end the banker's self-entitlement to the blood of our economy before these currency cancers bleed humanity to death. Without a viable currency, humanity will not be able to organize to defeat the elephant in the room, global dying from rising levels of greenhouse gas. Or, as black Americans have known since the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, voting rights without economic rights allow a lot of wrongs. To stop monetarism from bleeding humanity to death, we need more than government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We need a honest, functional currency that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. The life are fulfilled. These three people prepositions for the proposition. With life ours, the golden rule will return to its moral meaning rather than he with the gold makes the rules. Nations are now like credit card holders who use credit cards to pay their credit card debts. Central banks recapitalizing troubled banks with loans made of thin air money echo Mitt Romney's business plans. Romney borrows workers' money from their pension funds or secondary sources to buy a company. Under the guise of improved efficiency, the less productive but still productive workers are fired. This mode of improved efficiency is like the wrestling coach who claimed greater average arm strength by cutting off his team's weaker arms. Looks good on paper, but not the wrestling match or long-term wins. This shows the legal means by which hedge funds and private equity funds have ripped off workers since the Reagan-Bush team. They initiated the replacement of corporate benefits with 401ks. The diluted stock is called recapitalization. This flipping of corporations under the guise of capitalism was pioneered by William Simon, who was Secretary of Treasury under Nixon and Ford. Notice how he flipped a corporation to take $210 million out of workers, banks, savings, and pensions. Can you buy a car, strip it so as to claim increased gas mileage from the weight savings? and copy the title 10, 25, 50 times to sell to that many buyers. That is how more money Romney has taken his $250 million net worth. Can you buy a house, strip it so as to claim lower energy costs, and duplicate the house title many times to sell to different buyers? That is what more money Romney Bain's capital does as well as all of your other private equity and hedge fund using your money from your banks and pensions. Why? High finance? No. High crime. High risk? No. Like shooting fish in a barrel. Worse than the boost tax cuts for the rich was the automatic 401ks, which are welfare for the rich. IPOs let decapitalists steal now and then. 401ks let decapitalists steal from every paycheck. Part and parcel to the global financial crisis is the corporate crisis from decapitalists, drowning companies in debt, and the vacuum of workers' pension by the financial flippers. Why? Why? 
All play and no politics makes Jack and Jill desperate, destitute, and demise. Do you remember? They set an uptick in Dunkin' Donut advertisements a few years ago. It was just before More Money's Romney's Bang Group did an IPO. Not for Dunkin' Donuts, but for insiders to sell stock. They did it twice. In only a few days, hundreds of millions of dollars that should have been the savings of working class Americans went, instead, into the pockets of the decapitalist at Romney's Bain Group. This graph shows the shift in wealth ownership in America. This researcher calculates that since 1980, Reagan Bush, over $50 trillion has been taken from the middle class workers by stock auctions and IPO recapitalization. This is three times the U.S. national debt. Where has the legally stolen money gone? Mansions and mistresses. More money Romney owns six homes and as a Mormon polygamist, the latter is a state secret. When you see a new company advertising a lot on TV, it is probably a sign of a lead up to an IPO. The ads are not to promote sales of the corporate goods and services, but the sale of corporate stock insiders fooling outsiders, IPOs. Do the math. What does it cost the insiders in time and sweat to engineer a new product that can compete on the world market compared to doing a wedding dress for a bride they would divorce after the ceremonies? In other words, you can buy advertisement in an instant and then sell your stock options in an instant. Hell of a way to get a country back into the world market as a manufacturing concern. And this legal thievery is what is taught at the best schools. MBA means Masters of Bankrupting America. And we don't have a generic MBA running for the White House in 2012. We have the epitome. I like firing people. I don't care about the very poor. Detroit can go bankrupt. I bet you $10,000. Consider how the Dow keeps hanging around $10,000. Why? Insiders fooling outsiders keep feeding the funny paper into the market which dilutes shelves owned by others keeping the Dow in the 10000 range. The lottery is a tax on those who don't know math. The stock market is a tax on the middle class that ignores math. Monetarism and Wall Steel have become economic self-similar parallels to a person dying of congestive heart failure due to a septum hall. The blood only circulates between the heart and lungs. Mucker demands that euro loans be used first for bank loan repayments before domestic budgets. This is financial congestive heart failure. That is burning up economies one after another. The house of humanity is on file. And the arsonists who started the fires are in charge of putting out the fires. Good luck. Sadly, like many free world political leaders, she is at best an incompetent good Samaritan whose vision is an illusion. Hopefully, she will be a leader in shepherding life hours as a replacement to monetarism. If not, monetarism is bleeding humanity to death, setting in motion the social, economic, and political upheaval not seen since the 1930s.